<laughs> All right, make sure your names are on them. Pass them left. Uh, before you truly panic, uh, the ones I would put on the test would be the more gentle flavors, right? Maybe, maybe not put a use substitution. I got to expose you to that. Maybe not put a use sub, but the ones that were, you know, say one through 50 ish, those are fair game for the test. All right. Uh, chapter review tomorrow. Today's a pretty straightforward lesson. It's not that challenging. Um, make sure you actually do this. And oh, by the way, you have to have calculators. Okay. Today. All right. Homework. <clears throat> Okay, five, seven, and five, eight, one's exponential growth, one's exponential decay, no, or one's exponential growth and decay, and one's uh, compound interest. I can teach this all in one lesson. So, yes, I am not skipping five, seven, but we'll call this five, eight. Uh, this is five, eight, uh, the, the page 343, and five, seven is 331, compound interest. None of this can be done without a calculator. Begs the question, how was this done before calculators came into existence? Well, they had to make much more easier problems and they had to have tables and just the calculations would take forever. The weird what? Well, it's not that weird. Go ahead, okay. Hand them uh, in terms of complexity, we're at more like a two or a three today. One is ridiculously easy, not ridiculously easy, but it's also nowhere remotely being challenged or even medium. Uh, your, one of the apps on your calculator is called Finance App. It has some of these formulas in there for compound interest. You can explore at your own leisure. Shame on you if you don't pay attention because this is a pretty straightforward, easy class. <laughs> All right, everybody ready? Here we go. Calculators needed. So five, seven, and five, eight both uh, are about applications of exponential functions. What about logs? Well, we use logs to solve exponential functions. We'll do that in today's class as well, too. Uh, today's class is just one big can I use my calculator to do crazy math type problems? Um, we've been doing all this work with exponential logs, but we really haven't used them for a purpose. Today, we do that for a purpose. I'll show you three applications. There's lots and lots and lots of applications. Uh, we're going to put all those skills that we've learned to solve some real world problems. Uh, quick note, uh, let's see, linear functions make lines, quadratic functions make parabolas, exponential function make, uh, functions make ex exponential graphs. Um, notice for uh, red is your exponential function. Red grows the slowest at the start, but if we zoom out, it quickly takes over. I mean, exponential grows really quickly towards the end, but it starts off really slow from left to right. Uh, linears grow really quickly at a steady rate. Uh, parabolas also have a sort of an exponential kind of flavor to it, whereas we go further out, it grows very quickly, but it doesn't beat out exponentials. Exponentials grow at the most, at the quickest rate. It just some, takes them some time to get going, right? Kind of like a snow snowball rolling down a, a hill. It takes a little bit of time for it to get going, but once it gets going, it's got a lot of power behind it. Uh, flip that around and we get our second lesson. Um, we get the opposite of exponential growth, which is... Decay, and notice the only difference between exponential growth and decay is the, the X becomes negative, right? And we'll see that today. So keep that in mind. All right, so couple, uh, three applications. First one's about money. By the way, you're looking at, you're looking at, those are $100 bills. You're looking at a million dollars. That is literally a million dollars in $100 bills. Okay, so it's about like this, right? weighs about 40 pounds, right? Uh, here's me with $5 million, right? In a hotel room. 
<laughs> the one time in my life that I literally contemplated doing something for Emma Watts was right here. And I decided to do the right thing, not steal the money. What, what was the yeah. Oh, by the way, it was actually sixteen million dollars. Let's see, the boxes are out of sixteen. Uh, one of the missions we did, we went in, we brought in sixteen million dollars with us, three hundred dollar bills. Who spends to do things that we need sixteen million dollars to do? And we sat in a hotel room with this money, and we're like, "There's nobody in charge of us. What's to stop us from putting us into a taxi cab and going to the airport and flying away?" And we made the right decision. And that's why I'm not in jail, and I'm keeping exactly. mad because nice. we would have gotten caught, right? All right. You don't have a black box over your face. <laughs> uh, here's the we're both retired now, so the other guy I'm not worried about. Um, um, people need money, right? Two basic ways of getting money, even though you might say uh, there's a third, right? Uh, two basic ways of money: you got a job, you make money, or ethical way. Uh, yes. You go to where they keep the money and you say, give me money. Well, that place is called a bank. called a bank, right? So give me money either through a job or you go to the bank and you say the same thing, give me money. Banks don't give you money out of the kindness of their heart. Let's say the bank has a million dollars and you want a million dollars. What do you got to do? Don't, oh, you don't just have to pay it back with, with some extra money and we call it extra money interest, right? So they'll give you a million dollars and charge you interest. Right. Uh, at some point, you got to pay them back that money. Right. Uh, reverse also works. Right. Um, sometimes you want them to keep your money. And so you give them the million dollars and you say, take care of my money. Well, nobody gives anyone money for free. So you expect the bank to give you interest, give you interest money. Right. So it kind of begs the question if you give them, and by the way, at some point you pull your money out and you get the money with interest, right? Money is money with the question is, why are banks so nice in these big honking buildings? And why there's so many of them? Well, where do they make their money from? Yeah, but they got to pay you interest. But they make more money off their interest. Than oh, so when you borrow money, they charge you an interest rate, but when they give you interest for the money that you have in the bank, they pay they pay less. And those are just random numbers, right? Um, I will just say, you know, uh, credit cards, interest rates higher than 10% at a bank, you know, a decent rate right now, you can get 3% on your money, but they're not going to loan you money for 3%. They're going to loan you money for much higher. Uh, the longer the loan, sometimes the interest rate goes down. So if you buy a house right now, interest rates are anywhere between, I, I'm making these numbers uh, roughly, Three to you know six percent to to borrow money to buy for thirty years though you're paying that interest, um, and then if you're lucky you can get a couple percent uh, to to keep your money. Okay, so that's kind of the setup to talk about interest and talk about there's a formula. And if you remember, we already talked about this formula. We talked about where does E come from. Remember the the, the story of E. Um, so we had these a couple famous uh, mathematicians. One of them being Euler who uh, did some problems with compound interest and he extrapolated to, well, what could happen if it was compounded infinitely amount of times, right? And he came up with this number E. So uh, we, we've been, we've also dealt with uh, another form of called simple interest. Very few places use a simple interest. I'll just throw this out there for comparison. The simple interest formula, we're not gonna be doing simple interest today, is the I pretty formula where I stands for interest. Uh, P is your principal, the amount that you're borrowing or, or getting uh, or, or loaning. Uh, R is your interest rate written as a decimal, and T is time in years. Okay, So as a comparison, let's say that you put $100 in the bank for four years, and this crazy bank pays you simple interest of 10%. No bank pays 10%. I'm just nice, friendly numbers to do calculations with. Uh, so you start off with $100. Uh, it pays 10%. We, uh, you're just leaving it in there for four years, T for four. We throw those into the formula at the end of uh, uh, four years, you get $40. So in fact, you actually have $140. Okay, that's not bad, $140. You did nothing for that money. We call that passive income, uh, income that you earn by doing nothing. I didn't have to work for that money. I just had to leave my money in the bank. Uh, bankers are smart. They don't use simple interest. They use compound interest. So let's do the same thing with a compounded interest, four years. Uh, the compounds yearly at the end of the first year, you're making 10%. How much did you just make? 
Ten dollars. So how much you got in your bank account at the end of one year? Hundred and ten. So at the end of the first year, you have one hundred ten dollars. But then that's what's compounded. So at the end of the second year, how much interest did you just make? How much? Ten percent. Eleven dollars. Add that to this one at the end of the second year. You have. 121 do that same thing for the third year and for the fourth year so compounded yearly at 10 percent, you don't have 140 dollars. you have a little bit more right so bankers are smart They're, they want to make more money right so therefore they don't do simple interest they do compound interest and by the way that's compounded yearly well yeah if it was loaned to you but remember they're going to take your hundred dollars and they're not going to literally leave it in the bank it's not scrooge mcduck sort of thing right they take sadie's hundred dollars that need the banker she gives me and i immediately give it back to you i give her three percent but i charge you ten percent so therefore i just made seven percent for doing what nothing because nowadays nobody literally brings in physical money right it's all done electronically so i always wonder I mean, the people that are really doing the work are the computer programmers that are doing all the programming bankers type things into a computer but uh i'm gonna offend someone whose parents are bankers or something like that but in terms of a pretty cushy job i'm thinking banking is one of them write this down box one a so compound interest is that additional interest to the principal sum of a loan or deposit at given intervals. Now, the given interval things is, you know, it can be compounded yearly, monthly, daily, hourly. Generally speaking, many things in the banking world are compounded daily. But at the end of the day, then they do a tally sheet of how much they got to pay in interest. Usually you get that statement at the end of a month, even though it's not compounded monthly, which is why if you go mid-month and you're like, oh, they have to do an uh, additional calculation to say how much you owe or how much you pay. Because it's typically compounded daily. No. Okay, we're going to get a formula for a compound interest. The formula for compound interest applies to any time frame. Uh, we saw this before when I did E. I showed you the basic formula. We'll see it again. We'll just plug in what the, what the uh, uh, variables are equal to. Is everyone okay on the definition? Okay. So turns out we've seen this before. This is the compound interest formula. Okay. Uh, A means the amount you have at the end. P means how much money you started with, how much you were loaned, or how much money you gave to the bank. That's called the principal. It's in dollars. Uh, one is one. Uh, plus is plus. R is your interest rate as a decimal. N, there's two N's, one on the bottom of the fraction, one in the exponent. Uh, N is the uh, number of times it compounds. So if it compounds yearly, it compounds once. If it compounds monthly, 12. Compounds quarterly, 4. Compounds daily, 365. And then lastly, T is time in years. What you'll screw up if you're not paying attention is the R. It's got to be written as a decimal. They'll tell you what the percent is. you got to change the decimal. This is just a plug and chub calculator drill. All right, look at me. Uh, yearly, semi annually, quarterly, monthly, uh, yearly. Crack the calculators. After you write this down, I did. Yearly, semi annually, monthly, or quarterly. Monthly. All right, we got, got the formula written down. We'll just do a couple quick calculations. This, this we don't need to do twenty of these to get the idea. Okay, one and only one example. Uh, it says calculate the amount of money you'll have after two years if you throw in a thousand dollars. Okay, that's pretty generous, ten percent. Uh, you make ten percent, and then figure out what it is yearly, semi quarterly, monthly, daily. Okay, each row has one of them. Simple interest, I'll do that one for you as a comparison. They're not going to ask you to do simple interest tonight. Uh, simple interest, we leave it for two years. We make 10%. Uh, we start with $1,000. Uh, at the end, uh, you made $200. Add 200 to 1000 you got 1200 bucks. Okay, cool. All right. Here are all of them. I rewrote the formula. So each row 
grab your calculators, do your calculation, and then I'll call on one of you to give me the answer. Everybody know what they're doing? They got the biggest, that's a calculator, it's no big deal. Semi-annually means twice a year. It's two years. Oh. Two years. Somebody in your row better be calculating. Calculator. I'm going to be a complete total jerk. We get to test day. You show up on that day without calculating. Well, you did today. By the way, what did the sentence you just said? I'm not going to not show. That means you are going to show. Yeah. With the calculator, I'm not going to not show with the calculator. You said I'm not going to not show without a calculator. That's a triple negative. Mm -hmm. So you're going to show up without a calculator. Mm -hmm. Show up with a calculator. Mm -hmm. You can get yourselves, and that's why I teach math, not language arts. All right. All right, first row. At the end of the year, we have or the end of two years, we have. We have twelve ten. Yay! We made two hundred ten dollars. Hey, that's better than simple interest. That's compounded yearly. Nobody compounds yearly. All right, second row, compounded semi-annually. Wait, hold on. I'm still getting it. <coughs> that would be the calculation. <laughs> How much we got? Um, I don't know why I got one thousand two hundred. $15 and some, some quarters. Okay. Third row, compounded quarterly. Sometimes you turn on the news and they talk about the quarterly reports are out. <coughs> Notice we went up a little bit. What's got? $218. That's what I got. All right. That's not much more than the other ones. All right. Uh, monthly people, what do we get? Ooh, we're up to the 20s now. We made $220. And then lastly, the daily people? Okay. That's not much more. And so this gives you the impression that compound interest grows. <laughs> no, it's... What the, we, we went from 1200 to 1221 an extra $21. So this gives you the impression that compound interest is not much different than simple interest. We only made 21 extra dollars. We compounded it daily. You would think it would be of this huge difference. Now, right, granted, there is a difference. It's not huge. Unless, think about the shape of an exponential function. When the exponential function starts, it starts off by growing slowly. But as I go from left to right, and at some point it shoots straight up. Well. What's happening as I move from left to right? You're getting a higher number. What number is moving as I go from left to right? The x value, and in this case, the x value represents the time. The time. So two years isn't a long time. If you think about the x-axis, if we break it into years, we're on the second tick mark. You want to see the, the curve go straight up? We should make that value t. Um, what? T a bigger number. Elena? How do you get the different types? How do we get the what? Daily means 365 days in a year. Monthly means 12 months in a year. Quarterly means four months. Semi-annually two. This other two is we were doing it for two years. Okay. All right. So same drill, same calculation. Now everybody do the same calculation. Um, when you when do you think you retire? How old do you think you'll be? 20. 20? No, you're not going to retire. 20. 60s or 70s. 60s or 70s. So let's take it to the logical extreme. 
70. So how many years is that between working and not work? Or well, when did we start working? Some of you are going to start as soon as you graduate high school. Others of you are like a college. So call it 20 years. as an average. So 20 to 70 would be 50 years. So I invest $1,000, same thing, but I leave it in there for not two years, but for, let's do it for 50 years. Look at the picture. I mean, when it starts to grow, it starts to grow very slowly, but then all of a sudden it just shoots straight up. So let's take it to the extreme. By the way, ignore the slide, but I've already given you the explanation. So let's do it for 50 years. If I use simple interest right here, simple interest, this thousand dollars turns into $2,500. Okay. I doubled my money in a little bit more, right? But compound interest, and you're going to compound it daily since both banks do that. Change the simple and not up there. You have those five percent, five percent. Why did I do that? I don't, Why I didn't I notice this for three years? I don't know. It's not a mistake. Okay, do the calculation for 50 years. Grab your calculators. Hey, you graduate high school and you got your rich aunt who gives you $1,000. Boy, you're lucky, right? You take the $1,000 and you give it to someone, you invest it, and you make 10% for 50 years. Guess how much money you have at the end of 50 years? Good job. You put in 1000 and you got 100 Hmm. Good job, Paula. Somebody grab your calculator, do the calculation. Daily is 365. Our time now is 50. Uh, 148K. 148K? Holy moly. That's you turned a thousand dollars into one hundred forty-eight thousand dollars. I I don't know. Even in our our current world, that's still a lot of money. Thousand dollars is still a lot, but I'm saying you did no work. You did nothing. You just left your money sit there. Granted, you had to make ten percent a year. That's kind of the most people don't make ten percent a year. Yeah. Are we doing 0.05 or point one? We're 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 doing point one. Point one. Is that what we're doing? I did it for zero. Cool. Well, he hasn't did I do? Did you do point one or did you do point one? Okay. No, no, so, because well, it said I, it I, I, this is, this is, this should say. Yeah. On, on our sheet of paper, it says five. Does it really? Yes. Okay. Why is this the first year? Wait, is that wrong then? No, it's, you did it right. That's what I was asking you. You did 10% or 5%. Okay. See. So, at 10%, it's 148,000. That's a lot of money. A lot of money. Okay. Uh, a couple quotes. Uh, Albert Einstein said, compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. If you understand it, you make it. <clears throat> you don't understand compound interest, you pay it. This is why people say when you take out loans, you need to be careful. You are paying someone extra money just for the sake of bar. Now, granted, I, I don't have a problem with interest payments. It should be there. But if you don't understand how it works, you're always going to be paying it. You're never going to be earning it. Well, I'm going to keep my money in a mattress. You're not going to be making any money, right? It's called passive income, right? Uh, ben Franklin said money makes money. And money that money makes also makes money. It compounds upon itself. It's like a snowball that gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, this is an actual thing. When Franklin died, he gave two cities $5,000. And he said, keep the $5,000, but you got to invest it. You can't spend it for 200 years. At the end of 200 years, $5,000 turned into $20 million. You don't live for 200 years, right? But in your lifetime, you're going to make way more than $5,000. Uh, this is a, a pre-calculus class, not an investing class. I'm just saying, in front of your eyes right here, you turn $5,000 into $20 million. Wait, but what about if it's like, is that how much it was worth back then? No, this is how much it's worth now. Yeah. Oh, how much was five thousand? I'd have yeah. to do that calculation. So five thousand dollars was not an insubstantial amount of money. So, but it wasn't worth millions of dollars back then. So right? five thousand ten dollars is twenty million. Yeah. Dollars? But he gave five thousand of his dollars, turned into twenty million dollars. But it just was invested. It was nobody did any work, right? It just sat there earning money. Okay. 
Did these cities actually not spend that money? Did oh, I'm sure they bought Gallup. trash cans with or something ridiculous. Gallup may did not spend that. Money. All right. Okay. Uh, next application: bunny rabbits. Why are we going to be dealing with bunny rabbits? Because they multiply fast. Yeah. Supposedly, they multiply exponentially. We're not going to do that. We're going to be doing bacteria. Right? Bacteria, let them sit there in a petri dish, give them some food, and they split in half. And then those two split in half. And so it's growing by, you know, they're doubling at a certain rate. Okay? All right. Uh, nuclear bombs, you probably heard about nuclear fission, right? Also is exponential growth. Okay? So write this down. Exponential growth, growth whose rate becomes ever more rapid in proportion to the growing total number or size. Once again, exponential growth starts off slow, slower than linear, slower than quadratic. But then it overtakes both of those very quickly. You just got to wait a little bit of time. Say again? You know what you could do? You just put all those words on the test. Please don't. Or just do it to his test. Landon. For someone who thinks they have an A in the class, I don't, I don't as I was reviewing your grades today, if there's one person who needs to step it up for the next test, it's you, my friend. Yeah. Uh, I did not look at yours. I did, because I put your, your grade in. Yeah. All right, does everybody have the definition? No. Uh, we're going to get a formula for exponential growth. So we've got a formula for compound interest. We're going to get a formula for exponential growth as well, too. It's actually a little bit easier than compound interest. Compound interest just has that little strange part in the middle. But exponential growth is straightforward. Everybody good? All right. Uh, this is the formula for exponential growth. Now, it says the word populations, which lead, uh, leads you to believe that this is only about people, but populations could be the populations of Rubik's cubes in my cabinet. We're just talking about numbers of things. Okay. All right. Fancy schmancy notation here. A of T means as a function. Uh, A sub zero at time zero, how much stuff you got? That's the A sub zero. So A sub zero is your initial quantity. E is our favorite friend, E, 2.7-ish. K is greater than zero, it says. Uh, K is going to be the growth rate. Now, we're going to be dealing with population growth, so some of these numbers are not going to be pleasant. We have a calculator. Just be careful. Don't drop zeros. It won't be 5.8%. You'll see when we do a couple examples. Okay, It'll be a very ugly number. And lastly, T is not time in years. It's just time. If there's one you got to do a little bit of thinking on, it's time. Okay, the growth rate doubles every two hours. How much? How many bacteria do you have after 10 hours? Well, that, that would be you leaving it for a time of five. It would double five times. Tonight for homework, we're going to give you one problem with an A, B, C, D, E, and an F, right? Like they'd like to do in our book. The, the, the questions are pretty straightforward. They're not that bad. We'll do one example of exponential growth, and we'll move on to the next one. So make sure you pay attention. If you're lost on e, any one of the questions, you got to have a calculator. Everybody good? I want you to remember, exponential growth, K, is positive number. Okay? All right. Here's your example, A, B, C, D, E. Ready? Uh, you can read along with me. It says a colony of bacteria is modeled by the function N of T is equal to 100 times E to that number times T, where N is the number of grams and T is the number of days. Now answer some questions. Look at the formula you just wrote down. How much bacteria do you start with? 100. 100 what? I don't know exactly. Read the question. 100 what? 100 what? It's a way. 100 Read. Somebody whispered it. It says the number of grams. So 100 grams. Okay. How much work did that entail? Well, 
I thought it was going to be a little bit easier than that. It involved a little bit of reading. What's the growth rate as a percent? Be careful. What's the growth rate as a percent? 4.5%. You see where she got that? This will not be a friendly number for all the problems. We'll see here in a second. What's the population after five? What do you mean population? How many grams do you have? That's the population. After five days. Well, where would the five go? P. So I need what? Some scratch work and a calculator, right? So scratch work and a calculator. Scratch work. I'm letting T be five. All right. Do it. Uh, it's really easy to mess up the decimal number. So how many grams you got after five days? Do a round in your gram. How much? 125? Yeah. Is that what everybody else got? Yeah. Okay. 125. Okay, I didn't to the nearest. I did that. 0.2 grams. Yay. We haven't done one thing the entire day. This chapter is about exponents and last five days. Exponents and logs. We haven't done a log the whole day. When are we going to do logs? <laughs> Next question says what? Log. Doesn't say log. Next question says how long will it take to get all right, you're on. What are we going to do? Uh, yes. Find time in the log. Yes. The time is the next time. So where are we going to put 140? It's, uh, is it at least it's, 140? It's your argument. No, it's just take get exactly 140. It's going to be your argument. There's no log up here. But I'm saying you're going to... 140 is... A. A sub zero or A sub T? A sub zero is your initial amount. The initial amount is 100 grams. So it's A sub T. So we're going to take this exponential growth formula and we're going to let the amount equal 140. Oh, hold on, hold on. So we're going to let A sub T equal 140, yes? Well, do we know what K is? Yeah, we do. It's right there. The only thing we don't know is T, which is what it's asking us. So it's saying let the amount not equal 100, right? It's saying let it equal 140. See what I did? Is everybody okay? Now you're on. We got to solve that sucker for T. First step. Get the easy steps out of the way first. <coughs> what are we going to do? Divide both sides by 100. Yay. 140 divided by 100 is. 1.4. Yuck, we got an E. Well, how do we get rid of E? Natural log. natural log of both sides. Hey, we're doing a log, finally. Take the natural log of both sides. For the lazy amongst us, myself included, I wouldn't even write this. Because what's the natural log of E? Cancels. One, right? So that part cancels. So I would have probably written that instead. Feel free to skip that step if you understand it. Divide both sides by that ugly number and thank God for calculators, right? Yesterday's class was how do you solve? It's an seven point four eight. And what was T? What T was? The time. So, so seconds, what was time days, measured in? Days. days. Okay. So we got 7.5 days. Yes? Did everybody get 7.5 or rounded to 7.5? Mm -hmm. Questions? Okay. I said we're only doing one example of this. Okay. It says, what is the doubling time for bacteria? The only one you got to think about. The doubling time. What does doubling time literally mean? How long it takes to get to 200? So what am I going to do? Set it equal to 200 and do that same process again. <clears throat> Why do we care about doubling time? Well, it turns out for exponential growth, you're always wondering how long does it take to double? 
hey, when do I get, when do you double my money? At this percentage rate, when do I double my money? How long is it going to take? Oh, it's going to take five years. It's going to take seven years. When does the population of bacteria double? We're, we're just, for some reason, as humans, we're always interested in the doubling one. All right, what are we doing here? We're first step. Divide by 100, it gives me a two. We saw this before. Solve for E by taking natural log of both sides. If you want to write the step, write the step. If you realize the natural log of E is one, it cancels. You're left with a big ugly fraction that you think the stars that we have a calculator do the heavy lifting for us and we can get to the answer, which is how long does it take to double the bacteria? 15.4 days. There you go. You're now a scientist. Congratulations. Easy, medium, challenging. It's pretty easy, right? It's pretty easy. This is what homework will look like. We have one last thing to do. The bell's going to ring in five minutes. We just did exponential growth. We got to do decay. Okay. The opposite of exponential growth is this one. Exponential decay. The, the typical examples they already give you is radioactive half-lives, right? How long does it take for half of the material to transform into a new element through radioactive decay? Okay. Exponential decay, we don't have enough time to write down the definition. Here's the formula. The only difference is between growth and decay is decay is going to be negative. That's it. It's the same formula. It's the same procedures. You just got to make sure you know where the negative key is on your calculator. The questions will look exactly the same. They're done exactly the same techniques. You're going to have an E, so you're going to be taking the natural log of both sides when you solve for an amount. The K. The K is going to be negative. And you're not going to put it anywhere. They have to hand you that. Don't panic when I show you the example. It's going to be a very ugly number. But you have a calculator. You ready? Everybody good? Okay. So total amount, that's the initial quantity. E is still E. K is your decay rate written as percent or written as a decimal. And T is your time. So that all stays the same. We good? Okay. Do, do you see it? It's a really ugly number, right? It's just a number. You have a calculator. It is negative. So it's decay. So the, the, the questions are literally the same thing. It says, what's the decay rate? Uh, written as a percent, get rid of two decimals right here, it would be 0.012%. The rest of the calculation is done exactly the previous one. Um, we'll stop right there. You're good enough to get your homework done for this. Okay? This will not change with exception K is negative, but all the, problem, all the uh, examples are done the same way. You should be good enough to get your homework done. Have a great day. See you tomorrow. Are you excited for